When you think of bees, you think of that hardworking insect who brings us honey, but they actually do much more than that. They're essential in agriculture. Many successful crops depend on bee pollination. But bees are in trouble. Their numbers are declining, and experts aren't sure why. Here in Orange County, California, a major effort is underway to bring bees back. The first settlers to America brought European honeybees with them in the early 1600s. The honeybee is our workhorse pollinator. And bringing bees back, especially native varieties, is what's drawn habitat conservationists like Mace Vaughn to this carefully tended field in the hills outside Irvine, California. Vaughn wants these farmers and ranchers to know just how important all native pollinators are to producers and to the foods they grow for our health and enjoyment. Pollination is critical because many of our crops, um, if we look at apples, and pears, and plums, and cherries, and blueberries, strawberries, squash, melon, some of our tomato varieties, they need to have pollen move from one flower to another um, in order to be able to set fruit or to set seeds that we then eat. In the past few years, beekeepers, farmers, and orchard owners have been facing a phenomenon called colony collapse disorder. While its causes are still unclear, the disorder can devastate entire hives, killing off millions of bees. That impact ultimately affects prices we pay at the supermarket. With colony collapse disorder, there's been a major increase because of a shortage of bees in the price of renting hives. Uh, back 10 years ago, we we're probably talking 30 to $35 on average to, per hive. Today, we're talking about well over $100 a hive in many areas of the country. California's almond crop alone depends on tens of thousands of beehives brought into the state each spring to pollinate 800,000 acres of almond trees. Until a solution is found for the disorder, farmers, scientists, and others in U.S. agriculture are mounting an effort to develop a unique pollinator partnership. Critical to its success is promoting the growth of native plants on farms, orchards, and ranches all across America. So what we've been doing is looking at how we can help rebuild populations of native pollinators, wild bees, moths, uh, butterflies, insects, even some animals that provide value-added pollination services. In the east, we find that native bees can potentially provide all of the pollination that's necessary on the vast majority of those farms. Let's go down this way. One candidate in this Southern California field is this surprising variety of native bee. A lot of our native bees are really small, quite small compared to a honeybee. So this looks like one of our very small sweat bees. Facilitating increased numbers of native pollinators, however, often demands that farmers and growers adjust the plants that populate their available landscape. And when you establish good conservation practices around farm fields, you create a habitat where beneficial insects can take up residence, come into the fields, provide pollination services that won't replace those that come from managed bees, but will supplement them. In addition to bees, conservationist David Rate says certain plants, including black sage, can attract other types of native pollinators. Southern California has a, a high percentage of butterfly species that occur here and, and are really concentrated here. And so the, the black sage, as well as many others, will attract those particular species. Restoring native habitat to attract a variety of pollinators can also prove beneficial to reducing soil erosion and improving water quality. Part of what the project is all about is how do we structure and create an appreciation for, and more importantly, a commitment to create habitat and build up the populations of the native pollinators so that if there is a problem, we can still have an abundant supply of pollinating uh, entities that can help make sure we still have food to eat. About 15% of the value of fresh fruit and vegetable production can be attributed back to these free pollination services from native pollinators. While a solution is being sought for colony collapse disorder, developing a national program of native pollinators can provide options for protecting our food supply now and in the future. Native pollinators are a great example of a specific solution that farmers and ranchers can deliver from the land. Farmers, ranchers, forest landowners aren't the source of problems. They're the source of solutions.